Hi, and welcome to this virtual workshop video. Here we're going to walk you through how to install and set up the LMN QuickBooks Sync installer. The LMN QuickBooks Sync is going to help you automatically export your estimates out of LMN into QuickBooks, dramatically reducing data entry time and the opportunity for errors. Before you install, just realize that versions such as QuickBooks for Mac and QuickBooks Online are not supported by the LMN QuickBooks Sync. Unfortunately, QuickBooks does not provide the tools necessary to allow us to integrate with those two applications. Let's look at how to install it now. First, you'll need to activate QuickBooks in your LMN account. To do that, click the new QuickBooks option on the menu bar and click Activate. Once you've activated your QuickBooks in your LMN account, you're going to get an email with instructions on how to proceed. One of those steps is going to be a link to download the actual application. When you've downloaded it, it's going to come as a zip file. And when you open that zip file, it's going to give you two files inside, LMN Sync Installer and Setup.exe. All you need to do is double click Setup.exe to run it. it. Might bring up a warning message that may look like this, or in Windows 8, you may see a dark uh, black bar go across your screen. And if that's the case, click the More Info button. Then you'll actually be shown a button that you can use to install it. If you see this screen, all you need to do is click Run. Now it's going to open the LMN QuickBooks Sync Setup Wizard. Click Next. The first screen asks you where you want to install it. We recommend using the default. It'll also ask you who you want to use by default, just yourself or for anyone who uses this computer. We recommend you use just me. Click Next to proceed, and then Next to start the installation. For most computers, the installation will only take a few seconds. However, if you are missing some critical files, you'll see it come up in the installation wizard, but it'll automatically install them for you. Typically, you might see a message saying installing a version of .NET components that were not installed previously on your machine. If that's the case, the installation may take several minutes, as those files can get big, but the installer will automatically grab those from Microsoft's website for you. Once you're completed, you'll see this screen. LMN QuickBooks Sync was successfully installed. Would you like to run it now? And you can click Yes. When you click Yes, you'll see the new LMN QuickBooks integration screen appear, and now you're ready to set it up. Before you can start importing and exporting estimates, you need to set a few options correctly. They're all laid out for use in steps one, two, three, and four down the left-hand side of the screen. You're going to need to connect to your LMN account, connect to your QuickBooks company file, set some basic settings, and then match up some LMN cost codes and tax codes with their corresponding items in QuickBooks. To start the process, click step one, connect to your LMN account. It's going to prompt you for your LMN credentials, a username and password. Here it's really important to realize that you have to connect with a user who has accounting admin privileges. How do you make sure? Well, if you're the account administrator, that is the person who set up your LMN in the first place, you can go to Options and Support and set up Security. Each user has a security permission called Accounting Admin. Only users who have this permission set to True can export estimates to QuickBooks or can set up the sync that we're about to do now. So make sure you're set to true before you try to log in. Your systems administrator can also set you to true by clicking edit, setting the account admin to true, and then clicking update. Now that user will have permission to access QuickBooks with your company file. Remember though, you don't want all your users to be able to export estimates. It's a good thing to have that stripped down so that just people who run QuickBooks have this permission on. Enter your LMN username here. It's the same username you use to log into your LMN account and your password as well. Click OK when you're ready and it'll authenticate that with LMN. If that comes back authentication successful, you're ready to go. If you're having problems and you're sure you've activated QuickBooks in your account and you're sure that the user that you're logging in as has accounting privileges, then send us an email at support at landscapemanagementnetwork.com 
or use the live chat button. Once this says connected, you're ready to move to step two, which is connect to your QuickBooks company file. Click this button to start that process. The first question it asks is that you please open your QuickBooks to your company file and log into QuickBooks using an administrator account. This is important. You're going to need an administrator account in QuickBooks to proceed. QuickBooks is actually going to ask you to give LMN permission to read and write to your QuickBooks company file, and only an administrator could grant this permission. So when you're ready, make sure you have somebody with an administrator account beside you and have them log in. Leave QuickBooks open in the background as it's going to need to be open to complete these steps. Start by clicking Next. First, it's going to ask you to find your QuickBooks company file. You can click the Choose button. Find the directory where QuickBooks company file is saved, and it can be local or it can be on a server, either one. Click your company file and click Open. Now you're ready to proceed, so click OK. You should see a message such as this coming up on your screen, and it may look slightly different depending on the version of QuickBooks you're using. Here we're demonstrating with QuickBooks 2013. What it's saying is that there's an application that's trying to access your QuickBooks data, and that the application calls itself LMN QuickBooks Sync. The options below say, do you want to allow this application to read and modify your company file? The easiest option here is say yes, always allow access, even if QuickBooks is not running. You can choose one of the other ones as well if it suits you better. There's also an option down here to allow this application to access personal data, such as social security and credit card information. There's no need to give us access to this information. We don't need it for exporting estimates. Click continue to proceed. It's gonna prompt you with a warning message. Are you gonna, and it's gonna say, are you sure you wanna allow it access? Go ahead and click yes. Once more, it's gonna confirm that you wanna grant our application, LMN QuickBooks Sync, access to your company file. When you're ready, click Done. And it should say QuickBooks Connection Successful. Go ahead and click OK. Now you've completed step two. It says Company File and your company file name should be here. Next, you want to set your import settings. So click Step 3. The first import setting has to do with estimates that exist and that you're trying to re-export into QuickBooks. Let's say you exported an estimate into QuickBooks. Then someone went back into LMN and made some changes to that estimate. Now you want to re-export it again. This option asks you how you want to handle that. The first option says mark the existing estimate as inactive and import a new copy. In this case, what we'll do is if there are any existing estimates in QuickBooks that are an exact duplicate of the one you're trying to export, we'll just mark them as inactive and we'll import the new one as well. The second option here says delete any estimates that already exist in QuickBooks and replace it with the new version. So we'll actually get rid of the old version of the estimate in QuickBooks and replace it with the new version. Now, if you've created any transactions, such as an invoice based off the estimate, we will not delete anything that has transactions linked to it. The second option is your QuickBooks tax setting. Does your company charge sales taxes? And that owes sales taxes on or does your company not charge sales taxes? And in that case, sales taxes are off. This setting needs to match the setting that you've set for taxes in QuickBooks. You can see where that setting is here. I'm gonna open QuickBooks and go to Edit and Preferences. On this menu, I'm gonna to go to Sales Tax. And then up at the top here, I'm gonna click Company Preferences. One of the first questions, and this screen may look slightly different depending on your version, is going to ask you, do you charge sales tax, yes or no? If it's yes, then you need to make sure your LMN setting is also yes. If it's no, once again, you need to make sure that your LMN setting is no. My setting here is yes. My company charges my customers sales taxes. So I need to make sure the setting under my import settings is yes, taxes on. When you've got that straight, click OK. And now you're complete step number three. You've set up your import settings. You've got one more step to go in the setup process, and that's step four. Match your LMN cost and tax codes with your QuickBooks service items and tax codes. 
Click step four to get started. The first thing it's gonna to try to do is match your sales taxes. Now, if you've turned sales taxes off, it's gonna skip right by this step and you won't see it at all. But if you've got sales taxes on, what you'll see on the left-hand side is the list of sales taxes you've got in QuickBooks. On the right-hand side, it's gonna show you the list of taxes you've got in LMN. Now, you don't need all your QuickBooks taxes in LMN. You just need an LMN, whatever you need to estimate. However, you need to make sure any tax you have in LMN is matched to one of your taxes in QuickBooks. The way to match a tax is simple. You simply grab the tax in QuickBooks and click the left button on your mouse and hold it down. Drag it over to the left-hand side so it's over top of the tax you want to match it to, and then let go of your mouse button. You'll notice that the yellow exclamation mark here turns to a green check mark indicating that yes, your tax code has been matched. When all your LMN tax codes are green, i.e. all of them have been matched to a QuickBooks tax code, you're ready to continue. Click Next. It updated my tax settings and now shows me my LMN cost codes and my QuickBooks service items. Now this step gets a little complicated and you may need to pause or even stop the video and come back to this later. Give me a minute to explain. Service items are the crux of job costing. They will help you categorize all your revenue and expenses based on certain categories. Most people can't use them effectively because they probably have a hundred or maybe even a thousand service items set up in QuickBooks. That's often due to years of invoicing and entering vendor invoices in QuickBooks without a good system. Whoever was creating the invoices took a quick look. If a service item that sounded like it matched was there, they used it. If it didn't, they added a new one. And after a number of years, you've got all sorts of service items created and no real system. What you wanna do is set up service items so that they can sort of group together and track like expenses and like revenue and then you can look across all these categories to see how much you've invoiced and how much you've cost for each one. It's critical to keep this list simple. Expecting your foreman to break down a day's work across 100 cost codes is impossible. You'd need to hire them a timekeeper who could stand on site with a stopwatch tracking each crew member and booking their time accurately. With 100 cost codes or more, your system probably looks like this. Your foreman does their best attempt at the end of the day to make up how the hours should go. And at the end of the year, when you look across it, you realize none of them are accurate. You can't actually use it for information anyway. That's the worst system possible. You're better off having no system than a complicated system that nobody uses. If it's complicated, you've got all sorts of people spending time and energy trying to put some of the information in accurately and a whole bunch not going in accurately. And that's why nobody uses the system at all. What we want to do is create a very simple system that anyone can use, and maybe you won't get exactly all the data you'd like out of it, but at least the data you can get out of it is good, it's relatively accurate, and you can use it. Most companies don't need any more than 10 or so service items. What you want to do is create a service item list for each division and standardize it. For design build work, a typical service item list might look like hardscape installations for patios or walks or drives, hardscape installations for walls, softscape installation, irrigation, lighting, and warranty work. This is a simple list that the foreman can keep clear. If they're working on patios for a day, they can book all their time to patios. Or if they're splitting their time between patios and the seating wall around it, then he can split their time across two service items. But he's not trying to split his time across digging out the base, installing the base, tamping it down, installing the pavers, cutting the stone, way too many, and again, it's never gonna be accurate. Keep this list simple, and you'll find your job costing gets a lot better. Maintenance examples might include a list like the following. Lawn maintenance, cleanups, enhancement and installation work, Snow and ice examples might include plowing, salting, relocation. Irrigation installations might include irrigation installation, irrigation service, start up and shutdown. Lists that are this simple and this clear 
make it easier for people to track time and costs against. That makes it easy for your information to get entered accurately, and then now you can do job costing across service items. So no matter how long your list is in QuickBooks, and you may be looking at a list of a thousand items, let's pause or stop the video here to discuss with your bookkeeper or with your accountant or with your operations manager or estimators how you want to break down your jobs. Create a nice, neat list of service items. I recommend you don't need more than 10 for any one division. And then use that going forward to track in your estimates and to track as job costing information across all your jobs. To add a service item as a cost code in LMN, simply click the name of the service item you want to add and click import. That'll add it to LMN as a cost code. If you've already set up some cost codes in LMN, then all you need to do is drag and drop the name of the service item from QuickBooks over top of the LMN cost code and it'll turn that yellow to green again. I'm going to add a few from my QuickBooks right now. Once again, it's important to remember you don't need all your QuickBooks items in LMN. In fact, if you're like most companies, don't bring all your cost codes from QuickBooks into LMN. That'll give you 100 cost codes in LMN and far too many for your estimators to track accurately. Keep this list simple. And remember, you can always add more later if you need it. When you're done creating your standard list of cost codes you're going to use in LMN, and each one is matched to a service item in QuickBooks, then go ahead and click the Next button. It'll ask you if you're sure matching your cost codes. You say yes. It'll set those settings in LMN and then say congratulations. You've finished the whole setup process. You're ready to start importing estimates. Now we'll take on importing estimates in the next video. So you're ready to move on to the next one after this. Go ahead and click A, OK, and you're back to the screen. Now remember, you can go back and change these settings at any time. Every time you open the screen, they'll be listed down the left-hand side. You only need to do this once. Once they're set up, it's going to remember all this. But if you ever need to go back and change them, you can always click the option and go and redo it from start again. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. To actually see how we're going to bring an estimate from LMN over into QuickBooks and the different options we have for doing so, go ahead and watch the next video. Exporting estimates.